Hi everyone, it's Chris back in the cider shed with some more cider to try. Two ciders to try today, two of them. Um, and it's a first because they're both French. I've never done a French cider in the shed, which is amazing. Uh, incroyable, ce n'est pas. But yeah, I love French cider. Um, and I actually was going to, when I thought about selling cider, what I really wanted to do to start with was, was import cider from like Normandy. Um, but then Brexit happened, etc. So I thought, mm, I'm not going to do that. It was good in a way because it forced me to look at British producers. And actually, it's the best thing that could have happened. Because I found these, all these amazing producers in Britain that I had no idea existed. Um, and I could drive to the farms, meet the makers, uh, speak the same language. There was loads of advantages, no duty, like import duty to pay, all sorts of things. So actually, it's a great thing that happened. Um, so, yeah, I love French cider, so let's try some. Uh, my door's just blown shut, which has made the colour go a bit funny. So I'm just going to open the door again. Bear with me. It's, it's a lighting thing. Probably makes no difference whatsoever, but it was bugging me. There you go. So, two ciders. So, French cider. I mean, the, the regions best known for cider are Normandy and Brittany. The, there are ciders made a little bit elsewhere, but they're the two primary cider making places. Normandy is the most famous. And I have one from Brittany, one from Normandy, one from a relatively smaller producer, and one from a much bigger producer. Um, so, here they are. Now, something that's interesting about English cider is you only have to have 35% apple juice in it to call it cider. In France, um, you need 100% apple juice in it to call it cider. Or so I thought, and that is something, a fact, a fact which is published very, very often. And in fact, it isn't true. 50% is all it needs to be. So it's more than Britain, but not that much more. So yeah, so unless it says 100% pure juice on the bottle or it has an EOC label on it, as these do too, so on this bottle, there you go, that yellow and blue circle, that's an AOC, a PDO, Appellation Dose Contrôlé, or product a PDO, in Britain is what you call it. And this one on here, which doesn't have the colour, you can see that circle right there. There you go. So 100% juice, both of these, so that's good. This is a pretty big producer, so this is Cid Breton. Okay, this is made by Kerisac, which is a big Breton producer, probably the biggest Breton producer. I don't know if that's true, but... It's the, one, it's the biggest one that I know of. This is Le Père Jules from Normandy, the Pédoge in Normandy. So I mentioned this maybe recently, but did I mention this? I think I did. That these guys actually, so primarily, so they started making cider, the guy, is literally the great grandfather, I think, of the family, started making, um, who I think is Jules, uh, started making cider in the early 20th century after the war, I think maybe early, tw early 20s, started making uh, Calvados. And in, um, in Normandy, basically, they they think they're, they're, they're Calvados producers who also produce cider. So their primary product is, is Calvados, not cider, which is quite interesting because I never realised that until I visited the, the place, that that was the way it was. And for me, I like Calvados, but I much rather drink cider, personally, and I love their ciders. So, what should we try first? I suspect the seeds of Breton will be the drier of the two, so I'm going to go for that one first. So, uh, let's open it up. So both these ciders are keeved. Um, that's just a process in France that everyone does. They don't even think it's worth mentioning because it's just the fining process that the French use to produce clear ciders. That's what they do. I'm not going to go into keeving now. Yeah, I've talked about it lots before. Uh, but very briefly, it's a fining process that takes out proteins, which, think, which clarifies the juice. But it also takes out nutrients, which the yeast need to, 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 um, to ferment the alcohol so they can't fully ferment the alcohol so usually they're, they're lower alcohol and slightly sweet because there's residual sugar left over because it can't be fermented by the yeast for the reasons just explained okay so she de breton nice and cloudy so we're going to say unfiltered keyed and 100 percent apple juice okay fizzy there's the fizziness you can see that let's pour it out give it a sniff so French ciders generally have residual sugar because of the keeping. Um, and tend to be lower, not high in acid, lower in acid, decent tannin, but it does vary a lot. And even within regions, I think I was, I was reading an article where it suggests that even within regions, there's, there's terroir 
you know, so we divide them, like Bruce and can be divided up into three or four different parts, as can the Normandy, Bidouge, etc. So let's smell it. Okay, gorgeous. That's a lovely, ripe apple smell, like aged red apple. My mouth is watering immediately. A little bit of sort of hints of burnt sugar as well, I would suggest. But yeah, ripe red apple, burnt sugar, great nose, really inviting nose. There's not a lot going on, it's not complex, there's, there's not really much funk or anything going on, but really inviting nose. So I'm going to drink it. So quite fizzy, but that's okay. Delicate soft tannins, so a little bit of astringency, which gives it mouthfeel. Definite sugar, but it's a different sort of sweetness. It does taste like a ripe apple sweetness. Sometimes it's perceived as like a tartatin, baked apple character, but you pretty much get it in all these French ciders. And I must assume it's, that's that's what the residual sugars are, taste like, you know, which is a result of the keeling process. Um, yeah, bit of baked, yeah, a bit of baked apple, a bit of pastry on the nose as well. I would suggest. And this is a pretty big producer. This this ain't small. So, I mean, compared to something like, I don't know, Strongbow or something, I mean, this, this is like on a different planet. It's so much more interesting and quaffable, delicious. And it's sweet, but it's like a nice sugar. It doesn't feel like a fake sugar. It feels like a dessert kind of thing. I mean, I've got a sweet tooth. And there's a decent amount of sugar in that. But with the tannin and the hint of acidity, that sort of baked apple character, apple pie character, it's just goddamn delicious. Flipping love it. And it's not very expensive. Right, I'm going to neck this, go on the next one. So, Pierre Jules, there you go. Again, there's a bottle, a seed. We're having a chase, bottle on there. Okay, that's fizzy, as you can see. Let's pour it out. Much bigger head, much bigger head. I think this might be bottle conditioned. Don't think the, yeah, I don't know if the Britain is on is that actually. Don't know if it is, I mean, it might well be, I'm not sure. But look at the mousse on that, fine bubbles in there. That certainly suggests to me this is a bottle conditioned cider. It isn't necessarily bottle conditioned, but I assume it is. Okay, a bit more colour, a bit more colour to it. The um, Breton, as you can see, is a little bit pale in colour. Actually, where's my where's my thing in the jig? I should have done this with a bottle, you can see. There you go. So it's, uh, well, it's certainly hazy. It's got a bit of colour color to it. I'd say it's amber gold, that one. This one, I'd say just a hint more. Hint more amber to it, just a hint. Again, unfiltered, hazy, really fine bubbles in there. Let's give it a sniff. Oh, totally different. So that smells, I mean, immediately it makes me think of meat. Some sort of meat, there's some sort of, there's certainly a bit more funk in this. I mean, there's sulfuriness. Um, it made me think of like ham. Wet cured ham, something like that, straight away, which I didn't expect at all after the first one, which is all about apple. I thought this would be very, very similar. Yeah, more funk in this, more sulphur. Less obvious apple, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ham. I want to say ham. So ham. I don't know if that's right, but I can't quite nail it. I feel that's what it is. All right, let's try it. Much more moussey texture. The bulls make it much lighter. More sugar. There's more residual sugar in this. A fair bit more residual sugar, I would say. Tannins. I would say we're on a par with the Cidre Breton, the Carisac, I would say. Um, so first first of all, I would say, if you like dry ciders, the Breton's going to gonna win hands down every time. This is sweeter. I have a sweet tooth. It does not bother me one iota that this has got more sugar in it. The nose, however, it's a different kettle of fish. It's 
very unusual. It's like meatiness and, and new Wellington boots. Uh, I've, I've cheese mugged for 25 years, so I've been through a lot of Wellington boots. And the, a new Wellington boot has a very di distinctive smell, which I like very much. I associate, associate it a lot with Rieslings. Really good Rieslings get this sort of petroleum Wellington boot smell. There's a, there's a hint of that in the background, but there's a definite kind of sulfurness about this. Volcanic sulfur hot spring kind of thing going on. Yeah, really unusual. I mean, the nose and the palate are totally disjointed. What I'm smelling has, it, in no way informs what I'm tasting, but it's kind of unusual. Okay. This is more challenging, I think. I think it's a little too sweet. I have a sweet tooth, but I feel like it's a little too sweet. It's a little flabby. It needs something else to balance it. Some people might be put off by the nose. I find the nose intriguing. Um, this feels like a more expensive cider. Just the palate, the, 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 the things that are going on, it feels to me like this is a smaller producer. Uh, it's more complex. It's more interesting. But interesting is an interesting word, isn't it? I, I often, I, this is something I've said a lot. You know, if you say, If somebody said to you, do you like my new shirt? And you went, it's interesting. They wouldn't necessarily know exactly what you're intimating. Do you like it or not? Do you think it's crap? Whatever. This is interesting. I don't know if that's a good, if it's good or bad interesting, to be honest with you, but it's definitely interesting. So this feels like a higher quality product. However, weirdly, I feel like I could drink more of that one. Yeah. Don't know what we've learned. Don't know what we've learned. Really glad I had both of them. Really glad I tried this, but I'm going to have to go away and think about it, I think. So, there you go. Cider Smackdown. French Cider Smackdown. Who's the winner? Gosh, I don't know. I kind of want to say Cider Breton, but I don't know. This, this, there's, there's hidden depths, I think, with this. Okay. Well, that was my first French Cider tasting. On film, anyway. And it was interesting. So, I hope you got something from that. Get yourself some French Cider. It's delicious. Yeah, and, and and until I see you next time, cheers. I'm back. You thought you got rid of me, but I'm back. I had to come back because I kept on drinking those ciders. And I think the Peugeot is a better cider. I do like it more. So that sulfur has dissipated up in the glass over just like five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. And and I just think, although it's sweeter, and it's not perfect, it's not perfect, I think if I had to pick one, I would pick that one. It's just got more going on in a very delicate way. It's got more going on. So, yeah, the Peugeot just wins the Smackdown, although it is about two quid a bottle more expensive. So, yeah, that can swing things, can't it, again? Anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Thanks for watching. Cheers.